Hello folks, Mundane Man back again on the Jeep Patriot. This is a bit of a continuation of last week's saga with the uh, cold start that took me three days to get the Jeep going. And what I discovered in that process was uh, that I had a bad block heater. You can go check that video out to see the trials and tribulations I went through. So let's check out how I determined that I had a bad block heater. So there's a couple ways you're going to do that, both using a multimeter to uh, check the cord and to check amperage draw to see if when the block heater is plugged in it's actually drawing any amps. So let's get at it. Okay, I've got my multimeter here and I'm going to set it to the continuity setting and I can take the block heater cord and I'm going to put the leads, it doesn't matter which one goes on which side, on the block heater cord and see if there's continuity there. Okay, so when I put one uh, lead of my tester on one side and the other on the other side, you can see I'm not getting any continuity. If I was getting continuity, it should beep and show what, uh, what kind of resistance we're getting there. So let's do that again. Put one on one side of the uh, the plug and one on the other side and I'm getting no continuity through there. So that's one sign that shows you may not be getting any draw from your uh, block heater. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check for an amperage draw. I'm going to plug the block heater into a power source and see if it's drawing any power. So let's move our uh, red probe over to the 10 amp side on our meter. We'll leave the uh, black one in the common position. And we're going to switch it all over to AC amperage. So there's AC on my meter. And we're going to plug in the block heater into a power source. Like such. And but be careful with your probes. You're going to put one in the the hot side of the outlet or the left prong and one on the ground. And you can see on the meter, I'm not sure if you can see that or not, but I'm drawing about a half an amp. Now this is supposed to be a 400 watt heater so at 120 volts it should be drawing about two and a half amps and it's only drawing about a half an amp. So take my probe out, put it back in and I can see we're back to just half an amp again. So that's a sure sign that we're not seeing full power being drawn by that block heater so I think we're gonna have to replace it. First thing I need to do is figure out where that block heater is and through some research I found out that it is in the uh, back side of the motor and it's going to be a cone shape like that where the cord plugs into the end and then this just clips into the uh, block of the motor. The beauty of these is there's a space already designed into the motor to fit the heater in. You don't have, there's no water jacket that needs to be opened up and you don't need to drain your, your coolant to get this thing in. It just slides into the block and this clip holds it in. So I'm going to take off this air intake plenum, set that aside. I've already taken off the top cover of the uh, motor, that plastic item shield there. So the block heater is down in behind this air intake hose. There's also the radiator hose that's sitting here too. I'm going to take this air uh, hose off and see if I can get better access to the heater down there. Be careful of this air temperature sensor wire. We'll set that aside. We'll pull this hose back. Okay, now that I'm able to get that air hose out of the way and underneath the uh, radiator hose, you can see that orange plug down there, if it'll focus, and that's where the block heater is. So it's going to be a bit of a chore to get in there, I think. 
Okay, there's a connector on the thermostat housing that I am taking off just to get it out of the way as well. I got the old cord unplugged at least. Not getting the best camera angles down here, but now there's a clip on the side of the block heater that holds it in place. So I'm just getting in there with some needle nose pliers to pull it off. Unfortunately, there's a hose there that's in my way. I got the block heater most of the way out, but that hose right there is what's stopping me from pulling it the rest of the way out. Well gang, I'm at a standstill here. The return heater hose, or sorry, the return radiator hose down there is right in the way of getting that block heater out. There's just not enough room to slide the cone of it all the way out. So this is my uh, new block heater and I'm trying to slide it out of the back of the motor this way and this is uh, banging right up against the uh, return um, radiator line. So that's annoying. I'm going to have to drain the antifreeze out of it and pull that lower rad hose out of my way. Well, call me an idiot guys, but I cannot find a drain plug for the radiator. So, I think I'm just going to end up pulling the clamp off the uh, the rad hose that's going into the thermostat housing and make a heck of a mess. Can't really see it, but the clamp is down here and we'll see where I get with that. And you'll notice I took the battery out to get better access because I got tired of my arms getting cut up. Come on, baby. What? Well, I, I got it out. Not much came out, which is good. Now, can I actually get the thermostat, or sorry, the block heater out? One block heater. See that hole right there? That is where the new block heater is going to go. It's unfortunate you got to take the uh, rad hose off. I didn't lose as much coolant out of it as I thought because I left the cap on so it wasn't drawing in any air to push out any more fluid. Now I'm a little concerned about the new block heater. Look how much longer it is. Well, let's see if we can get it in there. I have my doubts. Well, I'll be. I got it in there. I'm going to put the po hose on first. Maybe I should put the, uh, the wire on first. Let me try the wire first. See, if, Then I will want to see if I can get the hose back on. Comes with a nice new cord. Which way are those prongs going? Kind of at that angle there. I'm going to stuff my rag in there. I'm getting antifreeze dripping down. You can barely see it down there, but it is plugged in. Now let's get the rad hose back on and stop the drippage. Okay, I got the radiator hose back on. I really don't like the fact that um, the block heater cord is kind of touching the um, radiator hose. It's uh, the silicone is rubbing against the hose slightly. Okay, we got smokage. 
Now, I'm hoping it's just burning off the steam from um, all the antifreeze that I got around there, but it is working and I'll demonstrate on my meter what what we see, but I can slightly hear it uh, hissing and you can't normally hear that when all the covers are on, but I did touch it and yowza, that thing was hot, so it's doing something. Okay, just to validate that what we did is working. I know I already did it and we saw the smoke. Uh, to know that the thing was heating and I touched it and it kind of burnt my finger, but just to prove the uh, the continuity uh, theory as well as uh, the amp draw on it Let's put our meter back on uh, continuity And we're going to touch one probe to one part of the plug and the other to the other and you get the beep that shows you've got continuity through the cord and the heater. Next thing we'll do is we're going to plug the heater in and uh, check the amp draw on it. Okay, we have our power source. So the block heater should be on. And let's uh, put our probes in the other outlet and show that there is a draw. So we're going to set it to AC amps and red probe on the hot side, black on the ground. And it shows we are, you can't see from that angle, we're drawing about, let's get my probe in there firmly, about two amps. So it's a 400 watt uh, heater, so 2 times 120 is 240, uh, so it's putting out about 240 watts of heat right now. Now I'd cleaned out all of the uh, antifreeze here and washed it out, um, put er pretty much everything back. We'll just get this breather hose back on the air cleaner. Batteries back in. I topped up my antifreeze from what leaked out. So we should be good. I think I'm ready to start it up and uh, check my antifreeze. But it's good to know that the uh, block heater is working again. So the area around the block heater, I'm able to get my thermal gun in there, is at 59 degrees Celsius. So uh, that's definitely warming up the block. Well, that's it for this edition of Mundane Man, where we changed out a faulty uh, block heater on the Jeep Patriot. Now, this block heater is uh, can be used in many different applications, such as GMs. Um, what else did it say? I can't remember, but there's more than one vehicle that's using these uh, cartridge style. The one that I purchased, um, was a lot longer than this one so the cord is kind of up against sort of up against the uh, lower rad hose at the uh, thermostat housing but i think i'm comfortable with how it's sitting of course these are supposed to be simple where you just pull the old one out and push the new one in however with that radiator hose right in the way of course i had to pull that out of the way and uh, work around that so you know not as easy as it seemed I, I pulled out the battery and stuff like that to uh, you know make it a little bit easier to get your hands in there I did skin up my knuckles a bit so that means I must have done it right because as soon as you bleed on something you know you've uh, put your best effort into it so we'll catch you on the next one bye bye oh yeah I forgot to mention I just ran the cord out around behind the air box and in behind or in front of the uh, the fuse box here and in between the PCM and then usually when I'm not using the block heater I just keep it tucked away back here anyways and you know they barely give you enough cord to go out the hood with it so I usually just had it hanging out there when I needed to use it and maybe that's why it went bad maybe it was more of a cord issue but I couldn't reuse the other cord because it was different so anyways that's it for now. Bye-bye.